Hi there, my name is Jason Pitt of Genesis of Legend Publisher, and I wanted to give a quick rundown on the open source software and how it can be used for layout and graphic design of role-playing games. Uh, the leading piece of software for layout uh, in the open source world is known as Scribus. It's not nearly as well known as the commercial version in design. However, it's also significantly cheaper uh, in that it is free. So I wanted to give a 101 level class uh, just on YouTube to explain some of the basics and show people how to work with the software. It's got a bit of a learning curve, uh, but I think that it is useful to uh, make sure that everyone knows how to use the free tools that exist. Before I dig into this, um, I just want to give a few things. First, uh, this is not going to be a Graphic Design 101 course. Uh, I strongly recommend that those of you who are interested in graphic design and getting into this, pick up uh, the Non-Designer's Design Book uh, by Robin Williams. Not that Robin Williams. Uh, it is a fantastic primer that explains the basics of alignment, of contrast, uh, and of hierarchy uh, for various things on a page. So, for instance, <clears throat> there's a, a reason why, if you look on this page, I have a strong vertical line here, text coming off of it on the right, and icons to the left. All of these icons are aligned with the title. This is just a quick rough thing that I'd put together in a second, uh, but those ba basic principles of alignment of hierarchy, so LibreOffice is bigger than the explanation here, all of these things make it a bit more clear to read. So digging into the non-designer's design book will be a great place to start. But uh, the other thing I was going to um, explain before I dug into the subject matter is there's four main programs that can give you everything you require to uh, prepare a role-playing game for full publication. Usually in order, LibreOffice or OpenOffice are fully functional word processors that replace Microsoft Word. Very useful tools. Uh, and uh, I know that a number of the larger companies use this. I believe that this is actually the tool used by Atlas Games. Uh, and actually, I believe the French government uh, and India, if I recall correctly. Uh, the GIMP. This replaces uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop. It's a very powerful tool, and out of the four, I think that this is personally my favorite. I actually prefer using this over uh, Microsoft Photoshop. Uh, sorry, Adobe Photoshop. There is Inkscape. This does vector illustrations, so icons. For instance, all of these icons right here, I'm almost certain we're done using Inkscape uh, because it's the correct tool. And then Scribus, the layout program in question. Out of the four, Scribus is likely, it's a bit of the black sheep of the family, but it has a lot of power that most people are unaware of. It has also improved a good deal uh, since its early, since the early days. So, at this point in time, Scribus is actually a fully functional program that can be used for professional quality publications, so long as you learn your way around the interface and find where things are hiding. So, let's dig into the basics. So, this is uh, Scribus. When you open it up, it will likely have none of these dialog windows open. Uh, just for the sake of the recording, I'm just going to increase the size so that you can see this. Uh, creating a new document gives you a lot of options, lets you adjust margins, bleed, uh, paper size, uh, your units, text frames, etc. I'm just running off the defaults to start. So when you open up Scribus for the first time, uh, you'll see a handful of items on the toolbar above. 
And before we really start digging into things, let's open up some of the very useful toolbars. So, uh, and dialogues. So windows, properties. This will show you all of the essential properties for anything you produce. So it has uh, XYZ for positioning, shape, group, text, image, line, and colors. So I'll show you what I'm what this means. So I'm just making a text frame right now. I can just type in random text or let's say insert sample text. Fantastic. Here's some sample text. Now, on the XYZ, I'm able to change the X position or the width of the box. Height, even rotation. On the shape, I'm able to change how I'm able to round the corners. Uh, I'm able to change how the, the text flows around the frame. So you can have, uh, this is how you would manage images. So you can have text flowing around here front in another text box. Uh, there is the text option, which allows you to directly change font information, uh, directly change font size, uh, changing alignment and all this, and then dig into a lot more of the details, including styles. We will definitely get back to styles in a sec, uh, but all of the goodies are in here, and this is where you can change all of the various variables that you might want, like here's a two column layout, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm just going to delete, oh, oh yes, and then there's line. So, for instance, in this case, because it's a square, it's this is going to create a line uh, uh, this is just going to do nothing. So, uh, this lets you do outlines and various things like that. And colors, which let you manage line and fill colors. So, I'm just going to make a square. So, here's a square. Using the line tool, I can change it to dots and make it a thicker line weight. Let's bevel it and then I'll change the colors and make it magenta. Fill and let's go with red out there. So now we've got, uh, and we can even do things like transparency. So we've got. 50% red coming off of a magenta square. The This gives you all of the necessary tools that you need to start manipulating any object in the program. So the properties toolbar is extremely useful. So the other thing, other useful things are the arrange pages. So right now, this document has a single page. We can, however, add pages. Insert, sorry, page, insert, and let's add four, five pages. Uh, at the end, I'm going to say that we're not using a master page, so we're just gonna use the normal. Uh, that, and if you had master pages created, you could apply those master pages. So now we've got five pages. Right now, uh, right now I have it set for single uh, page, but double-sided or pamphlets uh, can be adjusted in this di dialog as well. So this is how you can navigate between pages easily. So that's the arrange pages. Uh, there is also Align and Distribute, which lets you line up a series of objects and I'm just showing off a handful of other random tools. So the Align and Distribute tools 
let you do things like grab random objects. Now these can be drawn objects, these can be text boxes, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to align and I'm going to say they should all be centered on a vertical axis. Now all of these are perfectly centered. Now I'm going to distribute these so that their centers are equidistant vertically. So this is a great way to set up alignment uh, for documents and to generate it's extremely helpful for layout purposes. You can even manually set a number of factors, um, setting the specific distances, etc. Now, while we're on the subject of alignment, now that we've seen what the three dialogues are, uh, let's break into some of the interface uh, concerns. So, right now, we don't have the grid showing. There is a grid, uh, that's sort of the default, which under page, snap to grid, allows you to manage this in a much more measured way. We can adjust the grid size under file, preferences, under guides, strangely, uh, and instead of 20 points, let's call that 16 points. And then all the grids shrink. So that's how the grids work. We can also manually make guides, which are basic lines, and then have things snap to those guides. Uh, I'm just going to show, stop showing the grid so it uh, so that the uh, guides are a little bit more evident. So being off the off the page means that they don't show up. Being on the page means they, that they do. And you can drag them top or horizontal guides. And those will allow you to adjust your positioning of the content. Uh, once again, page snap to guides. I'll just take that off makes these really functional. So. Okay, so those are guides. Now let's say that we want to create standard content on every page. Uh, let's say that actually we want a page number on the top right, top left hand side of every page uh, this is uh, when you double click on a shape this is this lets you manipulate it uh, and manipulate all the individual paths um, which gets a little finicky but it's available so let's say we want a page number on every page so we create a text frame insert Sorry, we have to double click into the page frame. So now this is a text frame. Insert, and we've got all sorts of special things in here. Ligatures, spaces and breaks, quotes, and in the character section where you find bullets and that kind of thing, there is page number. So this will automatically set it. Now, uh, let's say that that is what we're looking for and what we actually want is on the right hand of every page to be a little icon this is so this is the standard item that we've got on all of our pages so let's insert an image so the text frame is on there's the select item text frame insert image so we'll take the insert image frame uh, we'll note that i'm being sloppy with the alignment at this point uh, because that's not the point of this specific exercise so we've got a text frame double clicking on the text frame lets us go in and find okay let's put in this icon of faces that i got from the noun project so this will put it in at full resolution i'll say mm, that's a little too big 
So right click, then I will adjust image to frame. So the image will fit the frame. Fantastic. This is what I'm going to, going to use overall. Uh, so I want every page to look like this. Uh, it would be foolish to actually want that, but that for this specific case, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, open up the pay, arrange pages dialog again. And oh, let's just delete these earlier pages. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to add ah, being finicky. So page convert to master page. So I'm going to call this master A. So now that I've converted this to master page, uh, I'm going to delete pages one to five. So this is the only page that exists. Wonderful. Now let's create some new pages. Page, insert, and let's add three pages at the end using master A. Because we had that set up, this is going to be page two with the same object. Page three, page four. Now, realistically, you're probably going to be setting up a number of different master pages for different kinds of content. Uh, for instance, uh, in one of the products that I'm doing layout on right now, I have all of these different planes of existence. And all of these planes have their own uh, structure and same kind of standard content. But then there's some just general narrative content uh, that comes in before where I use a different structure overall. So they'll all have page numbers, but they might have different backgrounds, for instance. So just like I was able to create an image here, I can also create a page back background. Let's say uh, I wanted, I've got a lot of options here. So let's just say that I wanted Wilbur to be my page background. Uh, and I would never want to do this, but let's adjust uh, image to frame. So this is going to be very massive. And I want this just to be a faint watermark. So I've got some image effects that let me, mm, let's say, blur it. So I've got a blur. Okay. Now let's uh, adjust this image a bit more. Let's go in Windows and Properties so you can remember we where we got here. And I will take Image. Uh, and I'll just drop in the contrast a bit more. And I want to make sure that this specific uh, item is moved to the very back. So all the text goes on top of it. And I will lock it. So now this can't be messed with. I can't move this item anymore. And this background image is in the back of all the text. Now, I'm just going to delete this quickly because this is this was somewhat ridiculous to establish it in the first place but for base background illustrations that's how you do it now we we've shown how to make text frames and how to make image frames now let's get into the nitty-gritty of text frames and then let's talk about the uh, styles and how you work with styles now I'm just going to add in a bit of text and from an existing document. I'll just grab this. This is from one of my uh, settings. Uh, now, I could just get text through an automated dialog and import it that way. Uh, but I'm just going to use a, a basic paste option to make it simple. So, a lot of text, 
but you'll notice that there's a little red X at the bottom right hand corner, uh, which I will just zoom into to make it clear. There's a little right in here. This is actually an indicator that uh, there's more text in here than this single text frame can handle. However, there's a tool for this. Now, along the right, there's a number of options, inserting shapes, lines, curves, freehand lines, rotating. And in here, there's editing text, which lets you uh, dig into it directly outside of this particular dialog, which you may want to get uh, play around it with at some point. But there is link text frames, which is a little blue arrow going from one frame to another. So you click on this, then identify the other text frame that you want to link to. Now, these are effectively a single frame. So if I put spaces, it automatically adjusts in the other page. Likewise, I can remove spaces and it gets pulled back. Fantastic. So that's how we get the fra text frames linked. Uh, you can do this between pages as well and auto flow the text that way. Now, let's get into styles. Those of you who are used InDesign or have used InDesign uh, know exactly what styles are. These are actually also uh, being fairly commonly used in word processors, such as Microsoft Office or LibreOffice. Basically, styles are preset uh, variables uh, for a piece of text describing all the indents, the spacing, the font size, font color, font family, all of the above. It lets you adjust all of the sort of factors in a programmatic way, which means that everything follows the same logic and is consistent throughout the entire document. A lot of good graphic design comes down to establishing solid styles and using them consistently. Now, how each program handles this it varies uh, program by program to some extent. Within Scribus, it's a little harder to access, but it is fully functional. So I'm going to go in and edit styles. The style manager is a interesting little dialog and it's broken into line styles paragraph styles and character styles. So paragraph styles are the majority of the styles that you're going to wind up using. These establish uh, within Scribus, each paragraph style also has a character style associated with it. Uh, so the paragraph style, well, I'll just show you. Let's create a new paragraph style. So a paragraph style, which I'm going to call body uh, can be based on something else and the paragraph st style properties allow you to, to do things like adjust alignment and I'm going to say that there's uh, four points before and four points after uh, left aligned and uh, it's going to have a left indent of uh, six points uh, and I'm going to say that the first line gets indented uh, an additional six points uh, perfect so I apply this now that just affects the spacing the character style that's nested under here lets you adjust the font family and style. So I'm just going to go in and for this specific project, I'm just going to grab a font that I was considering using. Yeah, I have a lot of fonts. Uh, so I'm just going to use uh, Centaur. And I'm going to change the font size to font size 11. and I can adjust the spacing between them. Underlines, they're all sorts of things. So I'm going to apply Centaur 11. Now, now that I've created that body font size, 
I'll make a new one which is going to be header. So header one, which is going to be well, because I've got uh, that for my body font, I want something with a lot of contrast compared to it. So uh, this particular project is a little bit more uh, Venetian in times of era. So I'm in terms of the time frame. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab Charlemagne standard. Let's call this size 14, uh, 16. And go in. Perfect. And I'm going to make this centered uh, with a lot of space afterwards. 12 space afterwards, 12 space before. Apply. And let's make a new style as well, which is a paragraph style, which is header two, which is just going to be header one, but it's going to be smaller. So it's going to be size 12. And let's even make that uh, less significant in terms of color. So it's only going to be 70% black. Done. So we've got our body, our header one, our header two. And let's also create a character style, which is game terms. So this is where you write in your potence attribute and say that your potence attribute is uh, a little different. So uh, this is going to be the same as the body. So I chose Centaur. So I'll take Centaur again, except this time I'm going to say that the that it's Centaur 13 and that it's going to be outlined wonderful and oh I'm also going to change the color of centaur to be centaur red it's a terrifying red and let's let's make everything red so now that I've set everything up I'm just going to go in so by default I'll just set everything to be a certain style so text style settings, paragraph style, body. And I'll just select here, paragraph style, body. Uh, this is my header one. This is my large title. So header one. Here is my header two, header two. This means that actually for almost all of my layout, going forward all i have to do is set things like this and it will automatically lay itself out uh i'm thinking this will be a great thing to go on the second part of the page so i will insert spaces and breaks column break sorry uh insert spaces and breaks frame break and ta-da it moves over to the next page because of the breaks. So I can make all the adjustments on this end. Uh, I can even adjust the frame if I'd like to make sure that all the headers are lined up with each other. I can turn this into more of a sidebar if I'd like. Um, for instance, I could make this a black uh, 20% black, um, there's all sorts of options, I could make another box around here. Uh, there's a lot of options here. So now that I have all those styles, I'm going to say, hmm, the enlightened man. Enlightened man is a game term in this uh, setting. 
Uh, so I'm going to go in text, and it's still going to be the same paragraph style, but I'll choose the new character style to override the basic character style of that that was associated with it. So it's game terms. So now it's outlined and read. So it's clear when anyone's looking to see what this game mechanic is. This is what um, that this is a line man. So I'll just go in and apply this in a few places. And I could even do this on this other character style if I wanted to. Uh, it changes the font, as you saw. Uh, there's ways to do that manually to avoid that. but uh, So that allows me to decide where I'm putting a little bit of more emphasis on certain terms. Uh, now I can put in an illustration at the bottom of here. Uh, I'm going to put in attribute flow. And then... I'll just adjust the image to the frame. And I can just move things around. And here is layout for my first frame, one page of this text. Um, and I can move this down. Fantastic. So this gives you pretty much all of the basics that you require in order to do full layout. When you're done with all of this, you can file, export, and save as PDF, etc. There's a few more options in here that, you can, that are hidden under preferences. Uh, you can save in a number of different formats, uh, and you can even import text, vector files, images directly from here. So hopefully this is useful and we'll show you the basics on how to get started in doing your own layout with Scribus. Uh, it's fantastic that there is an open source and free alternative to the uh, rather expensive uh, uh, program in design. That said, I am personally a big fan of InDesign if, if you're able to afford the program. Uh, which is not cheap. Um, so it's entirely up to you. But I wanted to ensure that everyone had, had a chance to learn the basics of this free alternative. Thank you very much. And for any more information, please feel free to contact me on Twitter, at Genesis of Legend. Have a nice day.